Hunters, some of you may already be familiar with Liar's Handshake from past seasons and the build that can come with it. But for newer players to the game, before we were in a world where Ark was completely neglected, you may not have a ton of experience with this build and the incredible burst damage that it is capable of. However, this burst comes at a cost of slow wind-up speeds and taking greater risks in mid and end game content. Let's explore. Your aspects for this build are going to be Lethal Current and Flow State, while using Gambler's Dodge to restore your melee when you dodge near an enemy. Both of these aspects lean into each other quite heavily. Lethal Current allows your melee attack to jolt targets after you dodge, and then punching them again while they are jolted will blind them. While not effective against champions and bosses, most other targets will be left completely paralyzed. Flow State will amplify you after killing a jolted target, which you will have done via Lethal Current. Being amplified will recharge your dodge more quickly and boost your reload speeds and makes you more resilient while dodging. The dodge recharge rate isn't vital to the experience as we'll be using Combination Blow. Combination Blow will fully restore your dodge cooldown on a kill and it will also heal you a little bit. So, the combo is dodge to prep your melee attack with Lethal Current, then melee, and then continue punching until the target dies, and then the target dies to the melee attack, which refreshes your dodge so that you can use it near an enemy to get your melee cooldown back, and then start the cycle over again. We're also using Combination Blow to continuously stack melee damage bonuses as Combination Blow stacks up to three times. Fragment-wise, we're just looking for stuff to boost our defenses and or the ability to jolt things just in case we happen to get into a situation where maybe we lost our dodge, which shouldn't really happen, but you never know. The first thing I'm looking at is Spark of Resistance, gaining damage resistance while surrounded. Considering where we're going to be most of the time with this build, I'll take some free damage reduction. Just remember that you need to be surrounded, which is three enemies in close proximity. After that, honestly, I feel like things are wide open. Spark of Shock and Ions make sense together. Ions is going to proc every single time you kill a jolted target, and Spark of Shock can help spread more jolt, but the ability energy is mostly going to go towards your grenade, since your melee and class ability should be instantly refreshing each other all the time. No cooldown or anything. Spark of Recharge makes some sense as well, since I imagine you'll go critical somewhat often, but again, it's probably only going to net you grenade energy. Spark of Feedback also makes sense here, giving you bonus resilience and boosting your melee damage after being hit by a melee attack. If you wanted to roll with those four for fragments in order to start and then tweak from there based on your preferences, I think that would be for the best. Before we talk stats, we must talk exotics. I started the video talking about Liar's Handshake, so what other exotic could be involved in such a build? Well, for those of you who are looking to play with a little more defense in mind, maybe a little more stealth, Assassin's Cowl is something that you can swap to. Assassin's Cowl makes you invisible after powered melee final blows, which you're going to be doing a lot, in addition to giving you health and shields. Finishers and final blows against tougher targets will increase the potency of these effects. The trade-off we're going to be making here is sacrificing that massive damage boost on cross-counter from Liar's Handshake in exchange for huge defensive power, allowing yourself to get in and out of situations much more safely. For now, I'm going to continue with Liar's Handshake in this build, as I personally prefer it more as big number make brain happy, but we'll talk about the Assassin's Cowl experience as well. This brings us to stats. Under normal conditions, it would be obvious to push for mobility and strength as a hunter. And I still don't think it's a completely dumb idea. But here's the thing. If you're playing this build correctly, which you are essentially forced to because otherwise it won't work, both your melee and class ability will be refreshed instantly when you proc their respective effects. Your melee will refresh via Gambler's Dodge, aka when you dodge, and your dodge will be refreshed when you kill something with Combination Blow, aka your melee. Your melee gives your dodge, your dodge gives your melee. The thing about Combination Blow, though, is that when it is fully charged, the melee charge will not be consumed until it actually kills something, which means you will always kill with your charged melee attack if you get a kill. 
The only time you won't get your melee back from Gambler's Dodge is if you accidentally dodge with no enemies around you, which can happen from time to time. But the regeneration speed of your dodge when using flow state is very fast. I think at tier 7 mobility, my dodge came back in around 10 seconds, which might as well be no time at all. So even if you mess up your Gambler's Dodge, you're going to get it back really quickly. This leads me to say that you don't really need to spec highly into strength and you don't need to press into mobility that much. Something in the 6 to 7 range should suffice. Which means you can spend that time statting into resilience and discipline. Resilience makes a lot of sense. You're going to be in the fray quite a lot and being as resistant to damage as possible is a very good thing. Although this matters much less the lower the difficulty of the content. And discipline is good to bolster your ability to throw more grenades and proc jolt on more targets. It's not the main focus of the build though and you're going to be doing plenty of punching and jolting and blinding. So if you can't get a lot of discipline, it's not the biggest deal in the world. Mod wise... Whew. Uh, what do we do here? Well, hunters are known for taking Radiant Light and Powerful Friends as stat bonuses for themselves. Unfortunately, these stats are Mobility and Strength, which we just said are not actually that important for this build. But we'll come up with some build options for people who still want to use those mods and for people who don't. My first thought was to try out Reactive Pulse again. You know, maybe they stealth buffed it. They didn't. It's still really bad, so skip that one. Heavy Handed seems like a good idea, but we don't need half of our melee energy back on melee hit. We're going to get our entire melee back when we dodge. I suppose you could build around Heavy Handed and just stack strength to 100 to get your melee attack back by waiting for it. That's uh, personally not what I'm trying to do, though. That just, it doesn't feel right. A striking light build makes plenty of sense here, though. You're going to be killing with your melee attacks all the time, so you can become an orb machine for your team. You could tack on melee well maker, elemental charge, and then maybe something like well of ions, too, with room for one more. Well of ions is going to be probably massive overkill in the majority of low-end content, but there can be times where you can... Maybe line up a one-two punch, combination blow, cross-counter, well of ions, melee attack on a champion, and then you just one-shot him. Although you'd need to melee attack first to proc cross-counter, then shotgun to proc one-two punch, which only lasts a second or so, which means you'd need to pick up a well. You could completely forego elemental wells and just push for all charged with light mods instead. Striking light taking charge, but this build is already completely self-sufficient. It doesn't need any mods for it to work. This makes it great for newer players since you probably don't have a lot of mods, although it is a more advanced build than the average build that I've been posting, which we will discuss. I would probably use Thunderous Retort while in Season of Plunder since you're going to be amplified a lot of the time, and the new super is pretty good damage. So why do I like this build? It allows you to adopt a playstyle that isn't really seen in the game that much. Burst damage on big targets via melee. It's a build that requires some finesse in the end game. It's not just a build that you can throw on and hold W in order to win. You need to plan ahead a little bit, you need to combo out, but when it all comes together and you hit those massive melees on a champion or a boss, like I said earlier, big number make brain happy. In your run-of-the-mill, day-to-day stuff, this build is going to be complete overkill on 90% of targets, with only beefier orange bar enemies and mini-bosses being able to survive a maxed-out melee attack. Most of your time is going to be spent meleeing, then dodging, then finding a new thing to punch, then dodging again, ad nauseum, to the point where I really don't find it that exciting to use with either of the exotics that I've mentioned. You certainly don't need Assassin's Cowl here. You don't need those defensive resources in something like seasonal content. I actually find this build rather tedious in anything that isn't mid to end game content because of how simplistic it ends up being. There's no planning or strategy or finesse needed. It's just punch something, which is going to kill everything around the target thanks to Jolt 
you dodge near an enemy, and then you find something else to punch. I would much rather use a Shinobu's Vow build in this level content, a build I hope to discuss down the road. But then we get to more endgame stuff. Legendary campaign, legend and master law sector, exotic farming, maybe some master seasonal content, and this, this is where the build comes alive. Legend Lost Sectors stand zero chance against this build at all. You will essentially be two-shotting, if not one-shotting, all champions after a stun. If you even stun them, barrier champions, you don't even need a stun. Now, I will say that this build works a lot better with the fact that we have unstoppable shotgun during Season of Plunder when this video is coming out. It makes building into a one-two punch shotgun type build a lot easier when your shotgun can be one of the weapons that also stuns champions. Outside of seasons without unstoppable shotgun, you're probably only going to run one anti-champion mod if you're in a group. But at around 10 levels above this law sector, I was absolutely cruising through it with no issues. Just stack yourself to 3x combination blow and be sure to refresh it. That is one thing I must caution you on, though. Not that it's a massive problem. Killing a target via jolt or explosion, chain lightning effect, whatever, will not trigger combination blow. The only thing that will stack combo blow is if you kill with the actual punch itself. This happens when you dodge to proc lethal current, then punch, and then a jolt explosion happens, like in this clip. Won't be the biggest deal, but it is still something to look out for in case you're wondering how your combo blow timer got so low. Like, oh, I swear I killed that thing with a punch. And then you gotta start the whole thing over, you get it. On Master, it's where things get a bit iffy. You basically need to be at a minimum of two stacks of combination blow to do any real damage to these bigger targets. Your base melee attack deals a pathetic amount of damage, so just running up to something and punching it to get rolling probably not going to work as well as you might think. Once you get to two or three stacks is when you can pretty reliably be punching red bars to death without much issue. I would not bother challenging champions without some big stacks of combination blow. On the topic of champions, they can go down pretty easily, again, if you are at maximum stacks of combo blow. I was 19 levels below in this master law sector at 100 resilience, so not quite GM levels, but close and I had the ability to kill barrier champions before they were able to put up their barrier. This did rely on a bit of luck though, as if they didn't stagger as much as I needed them to, or if my sequencing of abilities was off, then they were able to throw up their shield and negate everything that I did. I'd still probably bring anti-barrier champion mods with you as a backup. In this clip, the sequence was dodge to activate lethal current, Shotgun to get one-two punch, then punch, then the jolt explosion triggers, punch again, and they're dead. Ideally, you want to be punching first to activate cross counter, then shotgun to activate one-two punch, then hit your melee attack. But if you can't always do that sequence, it's probably not going to be a deal breaker in most cases. When you're able to keep combination blow active, and you're able to continue chaining all of the things... Then, even in master content, I'm, again, minus 19 here, you can really deal some crazy damage. The problem comes when you reach a room like this, where there are more champions than regular enemies and your combo breaks. This final boss room in particular, also the one I struggled with on Warlock as it so happens, has a boss that was killing me in about 2-3 to three shots, even with double void resist and 100 resilience. And sometimes... There's just a room with a dude who can do that, and getting in their face is just not going to be the play. Without the ability to rev your melee engine back up, it's going to be an absolute slog to get anything done, and this is where the build can just fall flat on its face. It lives and dies on the ability to kill fodder in order to kill the big stuff. In group play, though, this is going to be much less of an issue as there are more of you, and generally there are more normal enemies than champions to go kill. But, am I bringing this build into something like the Proving Grounds GM? You know, probably not. I'm sure some people can make it work, and I would like to try. But for most people, this is going to be pretty tough. Regarding Assassin's Cowl, your damage potential isn't going to be nearly as high as something like Liar's Handshake, but you trade all of that in for safety. That being said, 
I could argue either way for either one of these exotics in something like the Legend Law Sector, for example. I'm 11 levels above in this footage with Assassin's Cowl, and I'm still just annihilating champions anyway. Three stacks of combo, dodge for lethal current, shotgun, melee, explosion, dead. I don't even need Liar's Handshake to combo a legend level champion at around 10 levels over. Where Liar's Handshake gets an advantage is killing the big, big boy targets, the bosses, stuff that can survive more than one combo. But when you're dominating this hard anyway, what's one more shotgun shot and one more melee really? It's not like you're in any trouble of dying. The same can sort of apply for a GM Nightfall situation when that is available. Liar's Handshake might give you a bit more consistency when it comes to outright killing certain targets, but man, are you left very vulnerable pretty much all of the time. At least with Assassin's Cowl, you can do a panic finisher on an orange bar and get out, or just mash melee on something and get out pretty safely. With Liar's Handshake, the risk is greater, but the reward is also greater. When we look at stuff like Master Seasonal Content, Wellspring, Catch Crash as of right now, I think it's a toss-up depending on your skill and just your desires. Some people really value the healing, the stealth, but mainly the reprieve from the chaos and just being able to navigate the area much more safely versus Liar's Handshake where you're just in it all the time and where the bulk of what you're fighting is likely taken down without the need for cross counter. Is this something I'm gonna opt to use on bosses as a damage option? Probably not, probably gonna stick to linears. At 18 levels under and at 100 resilience, a barrier champion was still able to one-shot melee stomp me to death. So a grandmaster boss is gonna have no issue killing you outright in most cases. This is why planning ahead and finesse are such a crucial part of the build. You need to know when you can deal damage, when you need to bail. Good game sense is a must if you want to thrive in high level situations. If I had to make a judgment call right now though, I don't know how much I'm really trusting this build in a GM when I have the option of doing Calibans from a safer distance or just keeping things traditional with the safety of Void or even Stasis. Is this build viable? To some people, sure but it's definitely a more advanced build that will take some time to really learn and succeed with in endgame content. But in day-to-day -day stuff, go crazy. Legend Lost Sector farming, go crazy. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.